Autumn has arrived in the beech forests of the Buduk Mountains. The nights are getting longer, the temperature is dropping gradually, and these circumstances trigger the love among the red deer. The mating season is called deer rutting because corresponding vocalizations of the stags during this process is heard only this time of the year. The deer bellowing is a dispute between the stags, meant to decide who is the strongest without starting a physical altercation. The winner stag gains dominance and becomes lord of the territory and of its harem of hinds. Hearing these resonant, thrilling sounds year after year gives me the feeling of power and freedom. I am about to squeeze the happenings of seven days into 25 minutes, thus many shots will be omitted, so I will try with narration to tell the complete story. I am after a stag identified during a wildlife monitoring project that can be easily recognized thanks to his large, wide spread antler. The light of the first frosty mornings finds the forests in brand new color. The cold of the night has started a quick change that lasts only two to three weeks, the colorful part of autumn. The red cap of the fly agaric can be spotted from far away in the yellowish forest, but something else among the leaves is not calling for such attention. A young common European adder is trying, as are most young reptiles at this time, to make use of the late autumn sun rays, and hoping to get hold of some food as well. Its small body warms up quicker than those of elder adders, allowing it to quickly digest small lizards and insects. The alerting sounds of the tits and jays shows that something seemingly dangerous is around. The birds don't care that the one scaring them is in the middle of mating and could use some privacy, so they carry on with their nervous and uppity racket. They are angry at these owls because of the nighttime raids for attacking and taking away the songbirds at a time when they don't see properly or are asleep. To owls, mice are not just everyday food, but wedding gifts. A nice sentiment, perhaps, but surely not one that the mice themselves appreciate. For successful mating, Ural owls have to offer some mice or voles to the future mate to prove at this early stating of the dating process how capable they are. A bear cub calls for help. The longer the calls for help, the more nervous the mother becomes, and I need to pay attention to this. I'm heading towards them on a trail. There are less branches here, and so I can get closer quietly. The mother was caught in a wire trap and then saved by professionals. The absence of fur at her shoulder hump and the blue color of the disinfecting fluid indicates this. The behavior of the cubs shows that the suffering of their mother has left its mark on them. One of them is constantly looking for food, possibly an indication that their mother doesn't have enough milk for them. 
The other one treats his brother like a foreigner, viewing him cautiously, and shows other general characteristics of nervous bears, standing up on two feet to see better, constantly moving his mouth, uh, pacing between his mother and brother. Arthropod species form significant nutrition for the bears. Since wasps don't store honey in their nests, like bees, bears dig up wasp nests for the sole purpose of consuming the larvae. From the next valley can be heard the voice of a stag, a lonely stag. Some stags don't have hinds and therefore wander large territories looking and listening for another stag whose vocalization would indicate a weak and therefore logical adversary. At such occasions, dispute evolves and if neither backs down, perhaps a physical fight as well. Though stags generally avoid fights as per injuries that might later lead to their death, I am imitating the voice of a young stag to attract him. This method only works during the rutting season. As if pulling him by an imaginary string, he's getting closer and closer, looking for the supposed rival. Soon he will be so close, he will jump away as he smells me. Twilight descends, and my shelter is at least a one-hour walk. The animals have already set off to their usual evening tours, and in this area there are some mother bears with cubs whom I would rather avoid today. Fear starts to seize me, the fear of the unforeseen, because I know from experience that a nervous and or angry mother could appear from anywhere. We might notice each other too late. There's always a chance for an unfortunate encounter. I can almost make out a bear passing by in this thick fog. It stops and looks at me. I can feel its breath on my nape as if it would be standing behind me, but then I realize it is only the cold wind. Apart from the noise of the dry leaves, I hear nothing alarming, so I start my night preparation. But I cannot finish it. Some noises make me stop. More animals are approaching. I am looking for the stag. His traces led me here. His arrival is not surprising, but the circumstances and his nearness is unexpected. There is no time to think, just to listen to my instinct and act. This was the stag, but not the encounter that I am planning. We will see each other soon enough. During the night, bellowing wakes me several times. Dawn arrives. I arise quickly from the hammock and start my early morning expedition. I continuously pay attention to every noise, to every smell, and to every movement. 
I hear the steps of large wild animals from the gloom. I am trying to get closer. We notice each other at the same time. She is with her calf from this year. Out of curiosity, she comes closer, trying to figure out what I am. Then she decides I am not worthy of further consideration. the coniferous forest in another valley i find fog again the hazy dawn seems to be promising an encounter with the familiar stag i stop and listen while the wind is blowing away the fog and the unnecessary thoughts during the night the color of the leaves has changed again and I am so carried away while admiring them that only a bellowing can bring me back all the way to the ground where I spot a hornet. This brave fighter might be the last survivor of its kind for this time of year. The colony has a very short life cycle. After completing their duty of inseminating the queen, hidden by now, the hornets die. As I step from the deciduous into the coniferous forest, I need to stop again. Black woodpeckers loud on the trunk of a fir tree. Unfortunately, irresponsible human interaction can be spotted here as well. I cannot decide if the black woodpeckers are flirting with the red line or are annoyed with each other. The bellow of a stag is echoing from a valley impossible to locate exactly. The thick pine forest in front of me absorbs the sound and restrains the visibility. Despite all this, I must look for him because I don't know which stag I am hearing. Among the pines, something is moving. Is it the stag or one of his hinds? Now that the shadows have turned into shapes, the story takes a different turn. And I don't mind at all. This is one of the reasons why I like to be here. It's never boring. I will not disturb them for multiple reasons. Respect, fear, and to challenge myself to merge with the forest. To stay here long enough to get close enough to them. To look into their eyes. Eyes full of life and full of energy. The mother noticed me. My only weapon is the fear, meaning I will not make any sudden movement which might merit an unwanted answer. Bears surround me while I am listening to the bellowing of a stag, and the feeling of how weak and helpless one becomes in the wild overtakes me. She wants to be sure, so she walks half a circle around me just to check, then reduces the distance, looking at me time to time, not allowing me to see her eyes and face so I cannot read her mind.
I always experience personal and spiritual growth when I get the chance to look into the eyes of a wild animal, always learning something from it. The cubs are playing and shifting closer and closer to me, and their mother is keeping an eye on them, ready to help them any time. It's getting harder to detect these small signals and react to them in time. It's time for me to go. Hello to you too. While leaving, I need to make every step very slowly and quietly. You just stay there in a bunch. Getting dark. I decide not to follow the stag because I am unable to give the attention a dark forest requires. And I have the feeling that even the trees start to move. Yes, any three could step in front of me and strike me. After this long dawn walk, I am heading slowly to the shelter. I feel the time has come for the big encounter. The traditional call in the stag or follow his voice methods are not working partially because the stag I am looking for hardly makes any sound in daytime. I must base my search on being in the right place in the forest, based on his traces, waste, his markings on the tree, and the smell of his urine. Hopefully, he will appear in front of me with his reserved nature. This place doesn't seem like the best shelter. Open area with sporadic standing trees, no bushes, noisy dry leaves, but exactly for these reasons, he will choose this place. Here is one of the hinds. Another two are also around, each of them at different places, but still close to each other. I cannot show them because if I move the camera, they will notice it. Here he is. Unbelievable that they still haven't noticed me. The hinds are all around me. I cannot change the perspective of the camera, and so I don't have the chance to show more details of the environment. If he continues walking in the same direction, he will stand in front of me soon. Usually, the hinds are the ones who alert the stag, blinded by love. He will look exactly in the camera when he will spot me.
This light really shows how wide his antler is. Meanwhile, he is continuously marking the territory. It is hard to get close to the stag because of the guarding eyes that are all around him. But this time, they have failed. He is seeing perfectly fine, but during the mating, his senses focus on possible rival stags pursuing his hinds. I am still shaking, although they went into the thick forest minutes ago. This is the part of the story that I can neither describe nor record. I am just sitting next to a tree, trying to feel and understand the meaning of this moment. More than seven days for one single perfect minute. I should really improve these proportions. A big fuss over a young bear disturbs the three-toed woodpecker's breakfast. <coughs> to acquire the knowledge needed for survival is not easy. If one is lucky, the desire for discovery, fueled by curiosity, leads to a greater fright instead of something worse. The small acrobat is always on the guard, and he can never know from where and when the threat is coming. A storm-beaten pine marten is moving easily among the branches. Part of his tail, essential in balancing, lost in a battle, but this didn't keep him from catching the squirrel. Yes, I am talking about you. Well, this was a tiny bit of the many-faceted autumn. How I see it, colorful, creepy, always renewing, and, though in a silent manner, quite revealing. Let us learn from it. <laughs>